And one of the problems with uh, sampling in, in the, the Arctic or the vast space of the Arctic, particularly in regions like Canada and Russia, parts of Alaska, um, even parts of northern um, uh, Fennoscandia, um, very isolated regions, they, they're difficult to um, uh, get to by sampling, often you're having to fly there by helicopters or go over vast different distances by uh, various all-terrain vehicles. So because of the remoteness of the, the locations, we often only sample maybe one time per year or we don't get to sampling sites even once every five years. Some places in the Arctic are so remote they've, they've probably they've never been sampled. So it's, it's a very difficult aspect in terms of the spatial uh, coverage of the Arctic. It's a vast um, area of the globe. And um, one aspect uh, that we are attempting to do is develop um, what we would call hubs of monitoring, where we, we pick key areas where there may be research stations already established and where we can, we can establish monitoring programs that would be able to um, carry on through time at that location. Um, so we'd have a long time, time trend because that's one of the major issues is how to get long time trends of data. We, what we found in our data sets to the, this point is we can find data in many places across the Arctic, but they might be only a one sample in uh, 30 years ago. So what we really need to do in terms of following not only status, but trend is multiple sampling times in a location. So that's what we're focusing on and trying to narrow that gap over time.